The Great Pyramid is said to have been built around 2600 BC, but carbon dating it yields strange results. We get dates a few hundred years earlier than expected. It defies Egyptian chronology based on historical sources. How can this be? Are the Giza pyramids really a few hundred years older than we think? Let's investigate this puzzle. Before we start, a few general notes. We won't cover the basic history of carbon dating the pyramids, as it's already been done quite well. For this, watch these videos, linked in the description. To avoid repeating radiocarbon dating, we'll shorten it to RCD. If you don't subscribe to this channel, the Anunnaki will sneak into your bedroom at night and watch you sleep. RCD measures the decay of carbon-14 absorbed from the environment by organic matter. Since decay is radioactive, you may wonder if there's danger involved. Not in this case. The atom just spits out an electron or positron and turns into nitrogen, just like what's in the air. Who knows, maybe one nitrogen atom you breathe in today used to be carbon-14 in the relics of a T-Rex. But carbon has many isotopes. Why carbon-14? because it has the longest half-life, about 5,700 years. And this lets carbon-14 date things about 50,000 years back. History of human culture roughly fits this range, and many cultural artifacts are organic, so RCD is the standard in archaeology. In theory, you could date things with a few equations that don't really stretch beyond high school-level math. Sadly, Mother Nature decided to throw us a curveball, almost a literal one. The amount of carbon-14 fluctuates over time. This forces us to use a calibration curve, which compensates for different concentrations over time. This curve is constantly updated with new data. The data comes from tree rings, corals, and other sources whose absolute age is known. There are separate curves for northern and southern hemispheres, marine locations, and for after the bomb. Wait, what? The heavens declare the glory of the bomb and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The atom bomb. The many nuclear tests that followed World War II roughly doubled the amount of carbon-14. Scientists decided to just bypass this whole post-A-bomb mess and simply use 1950 as year zero for RCD purposes, with a separate curve after that. Mathematical functions can have spots or sections that make them unusable for certain purposes. For example, for the tangent function, in purple, the value for 90 degrees is undefined. No matter how hard you try, you won't get your computer to give you this value. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Similar math quirks also affect RCD. Here's how. Imagine you're in front of a computer. You type in some carbon value, and the computer returns a year in response. Let's say it's based on a function that has a nice smooth slope. For example, you type in 2, you get 3000 BC as an answer. You type in 4, and you get 5000 BC. No problem so far, your answers are clear and unambiguous. But what if the function has wiggles? Now whether you enter 2, 3, or 4, you'll get 4000 BC. Something's wrong if different carbon amounts point to the same year. It gets even worse if the function has a plateau. Now your input doesn't even matter, as you'll always get 4000 BC. It's a simplistic example, but it illustrates how RCD can be iffy for some periods, to various degrees. It's like having worse eyesight for some isolated historical periods. Instead of 2020, it can be locally impaired, or even blind. In such spots, you get dates that are too broad, too old, or too young. The most notorious such spot is the Hallstatt Plateau, between 800 and 400 BC. The curve is so flat here, we can't properly date anything in this period. Another puzzling spot for RCD is the Thera eruption. Thera is a dreamy island in the Aegean, which, in a bad stroke of luck, happens to sit on a volcano. 
Its center blew up during an eruption in the second millennium BC, while the island was inhabited. Fixing the date of this eruption is a thorny issue. Archaeology points to 1500 BC, but RCD stubbornly puts it over 100 years earlier. On the RCD side, we have an excellent artifact, a branch of a living olive tree, which got buried in the ash during the eruption. On the archaeological side, we have potentially an eyewitness account. The Tempest Stela, found in Karnak, describes darkness and long rains coming in from the west. This could be the ash clouds drifting over from Thera. So far, there's no accepted solution to this chronological puzzle. Maybe pre-eruption CO2 from the volcano is skewing the results. Maybe there's something else going on here. By the way, Thera is a good candidate for the source of the Atlantis legend, due to its circular shape, destruction by a verifiable cataclysm, partially sinking underwater, etc. Most importantly, it had an actual, verifiable ancient civilization, Minoan in this case. The last point contrasts with virtually all other Atlantis candidates, where evidence for ancient civilizations amounts to zero. So how does the calibration curve look for the Old Kingdom? Mathematically speaking, it's not very good. The slope here isn't great, though not as bad as the notorious Hallstatt Plateau, and we have two pretty big wiggles. This stretch of the curve actually may have some of the math issues we described earlier. It may, at least partially, contribute to the odd RCD results for the Old Kingdom. We can't mathematically determine if this is the case, because we have no way to test the calibration curve against an independent external reference. We only infer this curve from measurements, with no access to the ground truth behind it. Still, we can do a basic sanity check by asking the following question. If RCD is flawed around the time of the Old Kingdom, but not for the adjacent periods, are RCD results consistent with this? The answer seems to be yes. For the Nakata period before dynastic Egypt, RCD matches expectations quite well. So does RCD for the Middle Kingdom. This means that the Old Kingdom is basically boxed in from both sides. We can't just move it around without affecting the whole chronology. We can actually visualize how the odd RCD values for the Old Kingdom coincide with the questionable part of the curve. For a clearer picture, let's mark conventional chronology in green and the most recent RCD in red. Let's connect the conventional dates into one continuous path for visual reference. Now let's draw a kind of a bubble around the RCD values so we can see their extent. This bubble is at its fattest for conventional dates, in green, between roughly 3000 and 2400 BC. This happens to match the questionable part of the calibration curve, including the two big wiggles. This is consistent with curve-related issues negatively affecting RCD for the Old Kingdom. You may ask, since the curve is constantly improved with new data, will such curve-related issues for the Old Kingdom go away at some point? In the short term, probably not. In the long term, probably yes. If, as we add new data, the graph retains its overall shape and simply becomes more accurate, in this context, nothing changes. The relative flatness and wiggles remain a problem. But long term, there is a solution. As the curve gets more defined, it converges on distinct local patterns, sort of like fingerprints. Imagine that you have an artifact which recorded its own RCD pattern, like a time fingerprint of sorts. Then you can match it to the curve directly. This gives you an absolute location in time, bypassing all math issues. This is called wiggle matching. Do we have potentially suitable artifacts in the pyramids? Yes, the wood logs. We can take a slice of a log, get RCD values for each ring, and potentially get its time fingerprint. In other words, as calibration data comes in, wiggle matching may bypass any curve issues. Does an iffy curve region explain the issues with RCD values for the Old Kingdom? Partially, but not entirely. The red error bubble is thicker behind the expected dates, in green, as opposed to before them. By itself, an iffy curve region would probably tend to create more randomized errors, balanced on either side. Looks like we have an additional bias pulling the dates backwards. As others have already pointed out, it's due to two related factors. One, virtually all RCD pyramid samples come from mortar. 
Wood used for burning tends to be the oldest, most recycled and the longest stored, as it's the least fit for any other purpose. 2. Wood differs from other organisms in the context of RCD. Most people think that the RCD clock starts when an organism dies. But the correct term is, when a tissue stops exchanging carbon with the environment. In the case of wood, each ring retains the carbon imprint from the year it grew, not from when the tree was felled, died, or was used. We can be fairly sure that the old wood problem, as it's called, affects pyramid charcoal samples. That's because non-mortar samples of short-lived plants, reeds, grains, fruit pits, etc. generally yield later dates. In the kitchens of the pyramid workers' town, three out of eight samples of charred tubers and grains actually hit on Menkor's chronological time. It means that the charcoal in mortar actually has a much wider age range than other plants. And this is independent of any other potential faults with RCD for this period. For reasons like this, researchers prefer to work with short-lived plants. In those cases, RCD converges on expected chronological dates. Unfortunately, in the case of pyramid mortar, we have no choice. Most of the wood used for burning was local, predominantly acacia, and old recycled wood. We know Egyptians recycled wood. The sleeper-like beams and construction ramps came from old ship hulls. Imported cedar would more likely be used for new ships, new construction, weapons, artwork, etc. Regardless of RCD issues, wood used for burning seems to span a wide age range. Why is it so? Maybe, to make the big pyramids, the whole country had to be ransacked for every last piece of burnable wood. Possibly, after the big Giza pyramids, Egypt's ability to replenish its wood resources dropped to near zero. Perhaps it's one of the reasons Pharaoh switched over to mud brick. Nile mud is in an endless supply. If this is the case, asking why Egyptians stopped building big pyramids is just like asking why people of Easter Island stopped making their big statues. They deforested their own island and large-scale construction came to a halt. We can now see how unrealistic any suggestions are that require all the volume of the big pyramids to somehow be processed with fire. Just to make the mortar, barely a few percent of the pyramids, it looks like the whole country was stripped of wood. For all the pyramids' volume, some 20 times more, there's simply nothing else to burn left in Egypt. Recent RCD papers on the pyramids employ Bayesian modeling. We'll explain this briefly for those unfamiliar with it. In simplistic terms, the idea is to reduce uncertainty about something by making prior assumptions, which you think are valid. This can improve results when dealing with complex probabilities, you just have to be very careful about what assumptions you're making. Otherwise, what you're doing may be simply tweaking the algorithm to give you the results you want. Here's an example of a Bayesian approach. This paper assumes that the order of fourth dynasty rulers in the Egyptian kings lists is correct. In practice, this assumes that the Giza pyramids were built in this specific order. This seems justified to us. Even if one disagrees on absolute time, the pyramids seem to have been built in order of desirable locations on the plateau. The factors are limestone quality, limestone abundance, and visibility. Judging by the compressive strength and toughness, the quality of limestone in Giza decreases in the direction from Khufu to Menkore. The quantity of the better Mokadam limestone in gray decreases northeast to southwest. Another likely factor was proximity to the then existing nearby Nile branch, by which visitors arrived. Presumably, the closer a pyramid was to this route, the higher the visibility and prestige. It's likely that rulers and their architects chose locations on the plateau in a decreasing order of desirability. Other assumptions are a bit more questionable, such as assigning samples to lie within specific rains, or stipulating rain length. If we're assigning samples, we need to be 100% certain they come from a given period. Rain lengths may be agreed upon for more recent rulers, but for the Old Kingdom, that wouldn't be warranted. In any case, with Bayesian methods, this paper brought the RCD results very close to standard chronology, in the case of the Great Pyramid, about 2600 BC. Let's summarize this episode. Are the pyramids 400 years older than we think? It doesn't seem so. The RCD results are likely explained by two factors, the old wood effect and a tricky region of the calibration curve. Is there a solution to this? 
Not right now, but long term probably yes. Wiggle matching. With each day, RCD datasets and techniques improve. Maybe one day we'll know exactly when the last stones were placed on top of the pyramids.